Hello, church. Hello, Pastor. Welcome to worship on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to those who are worshiping with us virtually. What a joy to be together on this beautiful Sunday morning. I just have a couple of announcements for you. Our Monday morning Bible study continues their discussion on gratitude tomorrow at 1030. And if you are available, please feel free to join us. Your quarterly statement and offering envelopes are on the table in the narthex. Please take yours as you leave here today. That's less that we have to mail. Uh, we have fellowship following worship today, and you are all invited. So please join us down in Fellowship Hall following worship for some coffee and some treats. Those are my announcements. Everything you need to know to follow along with our worship is printed in your bulletins. We begin this morning with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. You're invited to either remain seated or to kneel. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are affected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve you. Amen. Now hear the good news. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the doors to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Our gathering hymn for this morning is hymn number 441, and I invite you to stand as we sing. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. A God of justice and love, 
You illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. first reading for today is from the fifth chapter of Amos, beginning with the 18th verse. Alas, for you who desire the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festival, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. The, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Please read responsibly Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Because of their shame. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tear. The second reading for today is from the fourth chapter of First Thessalonians, beginning with the 13th verse. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and the sound of the God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then... We who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the children to come up for a children's message. walking music. Come on, have a seat. Have a seat. Hi. Okay, on the count of three. On the count of three. Can we please wake up the balcony with a good morning? Ready? One, two, three. Good morning! Perfect. Oh, we got another one. Hold on. We're waiting. We're fine. Take your time. You're good. Have a seat. Thanks for coming up. Okay, so in the second reading that you read this morning, Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonia. Big word. Good job. Paul says... Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Paul's reminding the church that they are there to encourage and support one another. And he's reminding the church that because sometimes we forget that. We get really busy doing a lot of stuff every day, right? Right? What kind of stuff do we have to do every day? We have to go to school. Yeah, I know. We got to go to school. We got to help at home, we got to feed our pets, we have to go to uh, piano lessons or baseball or soccer or whatever, right? We have a lot of stuff to do. And we get, they're all good things, they're all important things, but one of the things we remember, we forget a lot, is that in addition to all those important things, another important thing we need to do is to encourage and support one another. So how can we do that? How do we encourage and support one another? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? By what? Your brain just formed. That's okay. What can we do to help one another? What's, a, what's an easy thing to do? Okay, here, here's a, here, let me help you. Say one of your parents has just gone grocery shopping, okay? And they come home, and they, they're trying to carry all the bags into the house. How can you help? Yeah. You can go and grab a bag and bring it in. Exactly. Um, if mom or dad is making dinner, and they say, I wonder where, what we'll eat on when we have dinner. What could you do to help? Get out the plates. Right. You could set the table, right? Um, say you've just eaten dinner and you've put everything in the garbage and the garbage is falling over in the kitchen. How could you help? But, by picking up the trash can, maybe helping mom or dad take the trash out, right? If you're at school and you see somebody who seems to be pretty upset, maybe they're having a bad day. Do you just say, hey, suck it up, buttercup? <laughs> no. What do you do? Can you just say, are you OK? Is there anything I can do to help? Right. Right? Right. See, there's lots of stuff that we can do every single day to encourage and support one another, but we do forget. So we have these little reminders in our scripture. We have Paul telling this church, listen, encourage one another. And sometimes we all need that reminder. 
okay? So that's all I'm doing is reminding us today. So I want you today to think of one way when you go home that you can encourage or support somebody. Or when you go to school tomorrow, think of a way that you could encourage or support one another. Because when you do that, you are sharing God's love. And it's a special thing. Okay? So we're going to pray. Please repeat after me, dear God. Thank you for loving us. Help us to share your love with one another every day. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And the devil said, Bummer. And Jesus said, Sweet. Thanks for coming up. Some of you can go to Sunday school. Some of you go back to your seats. You are allowed to answer the questions when I ask them to the kids. <laughs> Stop holding back. <laughs> Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The author of Psalm 78, not our psalm for today, but the author for Psalm 78 understands the power of story and the absolute necessity of it. He says, give ear, O my people, to my teaching, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. And he goes on to say he will tell these stories down through the generations so that no one will forget the mighty acts that God has done. The psalmist understands that we cannot know God without stories, and that we cannot know ourselves without them. The psalmist knows that we cannot be the people of God without telling the story of God, without passing that story on to each generation. Eli Weissel said that God created us because God loves stories. Christ came as the Word made flesh, a story in motion. And he went into the world with stories on his lips, weaving them wherever he went. A sower went out to sow. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers. There was a man who had two sons. And this week, ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Jesus understood that in a world where it can be so difficult to know God, to know others, to know even ourselves, that a story can offer a language, a doorway, a point of entry. He knew how a story can take us a little deeper into knowing, a little further down the road in our journey. We will not hide them from their children, the psalmist writes in Psalm 78. And perhaps that's where the true power of a good story lies, that it unhides something, it reveals something and someone we need to know. This morning, Jesus is using the story of the ten bridesmaids to reveal something to us about ourselves, our faith, and about how God binds those two things together. For five of the bridesmaids in today's gospel, the bridegroom had arrived, but they were not prepared. They did not have the necessary oil for their lamps. As a matter of fact, they were out shopping for more oil when the bridegroom arrived, so when they finally get there, they're not allowed into the wedding celebration. With this story of the bridesmaids, Jesus is asking his listeners to think about their own role in their relationship with God. In this story, he's lifting up the need to take personal responsibility for one's actions or inactions, as the case may be. The wise bridesmaids do what is necessary to provide light because the bridegroom is meant to be seen when he finally arrives. 
And these wise women are the ones who, provided, who provide the light by which the invited guests may see the groom. Jesus means for these light-bearing bridesmaids to inspire and model for us what it means to perceive the presence of Christ among us and to minister to him in the infinite and surprising variety of forms that he takes. However, we have to be cautious with this text. We don't want to be tempted to think Jesus' point is all about work or that our invitation to the party depends on what we do. All 10 bridesmaids, after all, were invited to join the celebration. All 10 fell asleep. So though Jesus cautions his hearers to stay awake, it wasn't solely for falling asleep that the unwise bridesmaids were denied entrance. Evidently, what makes the wise bridesmaids wise is that they know what it takes to make a party. It takes light. We need light. We need light so that we may see one another and know one another. We need light so we may recognize the one who invites us to join in the feast, not because he wants only to put us to work, but because of the sheer fact that he desires our company and delights in our presence. And that is a story worth sharing. That is good news worth telling again and again. But I will bet you a million dollars, no, one billion dollars, <laughs> that most of us will leave here today and not mention this story to another living soul. Why? Because the thing is, while this story was a great example for Jesus' audience, it's not a story that we can easily connect to in this day and age. We are not accustomed to the role bridesmaids played in ushering in the groom to the wedding. And so the whole parable feels a little archaic and somewhat confusing to our modern ears. Also, while there are some folks who are incredibly prepared, always plan way in advance, always bring more supplies or food or whatever, than necessary and are always there early, I and many of you may not be one of those people. So this story may seem unfair. And so, and we may find ourselves feeling more like the foolish bridesmaids than the wise ones. And so we probably don't want to share the story. So what do we do with this stubborn, somewhat archaic, and rather threatening story? Do we just leave here and thank God that we don't have to hear it again for three years? <laughs> no. I think we need to share the part of the story that resonates with every one of us. The core issue of this story is about waiting. And the kind of waiting that Jesus is encouraging through this parable is difficult. Waiting for something way overdue. Waiting for something you're not sure will even come. Waiting that involves active preparation when you're not even sure what you should be preparing for. That kind of waiting is challenging. But that kind of waiting is something we are all accustomed to. We all know what it is to wait. In particular, we know how hard waiting can be. Waiting for the call from, a, from the doctor with test results, or perhaps a sign from a family member or a friend with whom you've had an argument that all will be well. Waiting for the pain of grief to end. Waiting for word from your first choice of college or a lead on a job. Waiting to hear for news that your job is not going to be eliminated. Waiting to hear that your loved one has made it safely through surgery. Waiting to see your loved one who has been serving overseas. Waiting to see what new and amazing journey God has planned for your church. We are all acquainted with waiting. 
Whether what we are waiting for is good or bad hardly matters. The anxiety and stress of the living in the in-between time of waiting can be difficult. And this story reminds us that we are not alone in our waiting. From the earliest Christians on, we have confessed that waiting can be most difficult. Moreover, Jesus tells this parable in his own in-between time, his own time of waiting. This parable is set between Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and his trial and crucifixion. One thing Matthew and all the Gospel writers agree on is that Jesus knew what was coming. And so here he is teaching the crowds, facing off with his opponents and instructing his disciples even as he waits for the coming cross. Jesus, too, knows how difficult waiting can be and is with us and for us in our waiting. And that's why I hope that you do share the story with someone. If not today, maybe tomorrow, but someday. Because this story may offer them the hope that they need, that they are not alone in the waiting. That none of us is alone in the waiting. Ever. I find it striking that in our second lesson, Paul closes his, that part of the letter to those first century Thessalonians that found their own waiting nearly intolerable with the words, therefore encourage one another. That is our role as church. We are those who wait for each other, wise and foolish alike. We are those who sit vigil for each other at times of pain and loss or grief. We are those who celebrate achievements and offer consolation after disappointment. We are those who give hope when hope is scarce, comfort when it's needed, and courage when we're afraid. We are, in short, those who help each other to wait, prepare, and keep the faith. In all these ways, we encourage each other with the promise of Christ That's what it means to be Christ's followers then and now. And that's why we come together every Sunday, to hear and share the hope-creating promises of our Lord, to hear and share the stories. The good news of this story is that the bridesmaids are already invited to the party, and we are to all of us. Knowing that the time is short, we can dare to encourage each other and be generous with what we have. We can give good advice. We can stick around when the going gets tough, even if it means sitting in the dark for a little while. We can build new relationships, even with the foolish, even with the wise. We can dare to wait and share the stories, knowing Our citizenship in the kingdom is guaranteed, and the bridegroom is at hand. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to hymn 861. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4. And I invite you to stand as we sing.
seated, I would like to invite all of the veterans to come forward and meet me up here at the rail. Come on. Please come forward. Face them. Fill our altar here. There we go. Please, tallest, stand in front of me. <laughs> yeah, John. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. First, I want to. Oh, we got more coming. Come on down. Perfect. First, I want to read for you Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, see what desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. If you could all just turn and face me. Hi. For everything, there is a season. A time for war and a time for peace. A time for every activity under heaven. For a season of life, you gave up freedom to become a servant. For a season of life, you put the lives of others before your own. For a season of life, you sacrificed for the sake of others. Your season of military service is complete, yet your life in Christ knows no end. In baptism, Christ claimed you as his own and grafted you into his servant body. The burdens you carried in military service and those you carry now are not far from Christ but are taken by our Savior to the cross. They are swallowed up in his death, and you are raised with Christ to resurrection life. We give thanks to God for your season of service and for your life in Christ among us today. May the one who gave you the will to deny yourself, sacrifice, and serve, bless you with faith, hope, and love all your days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Sovereign God, by your Holy Spirit, you call people to many and diverse walks of life. We give you thanks for these men and women's time of service in the armed forces, for the good they were able to do, for the friendships they formed, and for the lessons they learned. Heal the wounds of their service and strengthen them to serve you until that day when your trumpet sounds, calling them to our heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. If you would turn and face them. Would you please join me in thanking our veterans? with you during our coffee hour in Fellowship Hall following worship. I'm going to invite you to return to your seats. As they return to their seats, I'm going to invite everyone to please stand for the creed.
And now let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people, bring your salvation, and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship, and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray especially for the people of Gaza, Israel, and Ukraine. Hear us, O God. O God, in hope we wait, we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger, support the under or unemployed, and comfort any who are suffering this day. We pray especially this day for Aaron Alfano, Jane, Jan Bertolet, Austin Brown, Kim Cave, Sherry Daddario, Joan Esterly, Mason Fiervanti, Bernice Kaufman, Larissa Kelly, Carl Kendall, Tony Lawrence, Joseph Marciello, Myrtle Schlauck, Richard Skonixon, Lauren Sullivan, Marie Swigert, Cynthia Vincent, Joan Youngerman, Kathy Zadlow, and Albert Ziegler. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and God does the inviting, and everyone is welcome to the table. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Body Christ given to you. 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 Body Christ given to you.
I invite you all to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 439. <laughs> Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>